Fellow divers out there with long hair, do you ever find after a long day of diving, especially with multiple dives, your hair is just truly unruly? It's tangled, it's knotted, it's almost dreaded? Well, we're here to give you some tips and tricks on how to manage that. Welcome, Welcome to, to Everything, Everything Scuba. Scuba. Welcome to Everything Scuba. I'm Jackie. And I'm Claire, and we're instructors out of the U.S. Virgin Islands. If you've ever watched videos here on Everything Scuba, you'll know that Lyle doesn't have any hair. So he's definitely not an expert on the subject. So we're taking over the show today. There are a number of issues that come along with diving and long hair. For one, if you don't secure it properly with hair like this, it is going to be here, there, and everywhere. It's going to be in my face. I can't see. It's going to get wrapped around my first stage, and it's going to cause all sorts of complications, not only during a dive, but after the dive. Also, being in the salt water and the sun all day, dries it out quite a bit. So the first thing we're going to talk about in terms of pre-dive preparation for people with long hair are going to be the products and the tools used. We're also going to talk about how we secure our hair during a dive so it doesn't go everywhere. We're then going to talk about how we manage our hair post-dive to try to keep it healthy. So pre-dive, the first thing that I like to do is apply a little bit of leave-in conditioner to my hair. My favorite product that I've found so far, and I've been diving since I was 12, is Stream to Sea Leave-In Conditioner. Stream to Sea is a reef-safe product, and it's important to use reef-safe pro safe products because it preserves the reef for future generations. So for me, with my amount of hair using Stream to Sea, I only have to apply about that much conditioner and it'll get the job done. So as you can see, it doesn't take very much. And for me, I use maybe two thirds that amount for my hair. Stream to Sea products are actually fairly easy to find. I know every dive shop on island that I know of carries um, at least one to three products by them. And even my shop in Indiana carries Seam to Stream products. And you can, you can check the description below and we actually have a link to their website. So there are a lot of different ways you can manage your hair uh, while diving. Um, you can do things such as wear a buff or a headband. Um, you can wear braids. You can put it up in a bun. Um, I personally either put it up in a bun or braids simply because um, I'm taking my mask off quite a bit during teaching. And sometimes if I wear a headband or something else to secure my hair, the headband will fall off too. And that just adds an element underwater that I really don't need to deal with in front of students. So personally, I always do my hair one standard way just because it works uh, the same whether I'm teaching or whether I'm not. It's universal and for me it's been the easiest uh, way to manage all of this nonsense. Real quick, easy demonstration of how I like to put my hair up in a tight bun. And it's always a tight bun opposed to a loose bun. I do like to emphasize that. Loose buns will come out. Those strands of hair will get in your way or they can wrap around your first stage and we're trying to avoid that. So the first thing I like to do is brush it out. It doesn't have to be perfect, but the less knots you have going in, the less knots you're gonna have coming out. And then I just take my hair and I pull it up. The next step that I do for the tight bun is you want to make sure that you wrap it super tight like this. And then I like to tie it off with um, an ouchless hair tie. It's a hair tie that is just a hair tie. It has no metal pieces, nothing like that. I tie it up as tight as I can and as high as I can on my head, and that's it. So another point to make is that because I'm an instructor or just because maybe you're on a dive trip, you're doing multiple dives a day, you're on a boat, there's not too much time in between and sometimes we don't have fresh water in between. The most simple thing that I like to do is reapply the same amount of conditioner to my hair on top of the knot. So for me, uh, between dives, if I have a long period of time between dives, I'll rinse it with fresh water and then put some more leave-in conditioner in. For all you viewers out there with long hair, do you guys have a particular regimen you do um, to help secure your hair or treat it? If so, we'd love to hear about it. Leave a comment below. 
So post dive, the first thing I want to do, even before I take care of my gear, when I get back to the dive shop, we have freshwater showers out back. I like to get in there and due to the fact that I've already been using our seam to stree leave-in conditioner all day, I don't have to reapply. There's already enough in there. When the fresh water hits it, it already starts to loosen. While I am actually under the one running water, that's when I take out my wet brush and I begin brushing out the knots. It seems to be easier while you're in the shower and your hair is saturated that much with the fresh water to get those knots out. I personally like the wet brush the most because it has more give. A regular brush with the more sturdy bristle will work against your hair and not with your hair. I have actually had bristles come out into my hair and that has never happened with this brush. As you can see, the uh, bristles are much more flexible and you don't get that with your generic everyday brush. So my routine is very similar to Claire's. Um, if I'm diving the next day, I take fresh water and rinse my hair out. And then I use this, the Seed of Stream product um, in my hair and my wet brush. I have a different routine if I'm not diving the next day where I'll um, actually wash my hair with shampoo. I'm really not picky on the type of shampoo I use, but conditioner. Um, a lot of times I like to just cake in um, some of the less expensive conditioner because this is still a great product. Um, once every couple weeks, I like to use something a little more fortifying but I'll cake in the conditioner in my hair and leave it there while I'm cleaning gear. And then after I'm done cleaning my gear and letting it start to dry, then I'll rinse the conditioner out of my hair. Um, also, I like to finish up with a little bit of oil just to um, help the ends because they get very dry and damaged. Um, when I have conditioner in my hair, I also like a big uh, comb like this. Um, to help get the tangles out. And I use my wet brush more after I've treated my hair instead of to treat my hair. And remember, these are not reef safe products, which is why I use them after the dive instead of prior to. Honestly, as far as washing my hair goes, I wash my hair every seven to 10 days, especially if I'm diving on a day-to-day -day basis, multiple dives, um, being in the water like that, it really just strips your hair of those natural oils. Just another reason I love Stream to See, the leave-in part of the conditioner is hydrating my hair throughout the whole day while I'm in the water and then afterwards when I go home and repeat. So I've found that my hair is overall healthier just due to the fact that it's more hydrated now. So I'm kind of loving the fact that women are taking over the Everything Scuba show today. And speaking of, are there any other topics out there, women, that you feel like Everything Scuba could touch on that are women-based? Or for you men out there, are there any topics that you'd like to ask about from a women's perspective regarding scuba diving? So, so leave, leave us, us some, some comments. comments. So if you're a diver with long hair or you're a friend of a diver with long hair and you found any of these tips and tricks helpful, please hit the like button below and that'll help us uh, reach more viewers and more divers uh, that need help.